Living near Houston, Texas, there's not many things that we study that can have a larger impact on our lives than a hurricane. So let's take a deeper look at what a hurricane is and how it forms so that we can understand these things. So we know that hurricanes form over the ocean and you may have even heard that they form over warm water. They have to have warm ocean water. We know that warm water heats the air above it and so this air starts to rise right because it's less dense and as it rises it brings with it all of that humidity and you start to form clouds because the air is cooling down up here all right and we start to form these convection currents right. and so we get down here at the very bottom we get low pressure forming right if you remember from our video about weather, when air is rising, you have low pressure. When air is coming down, like it's squishing, you end up with high pressure. So we have high pressure here. Air always goes from high pressure to low pressure. And the more that air starts to rise, it starts to cool, and it can't hold the water that it used to. So the water vapor, right, this is very humid air. If you've ever been to the ocean, you know that it's humid. When that air gets way up in the sky and starts to cool down, it condenses and it forms into little water drops. Now there is a idea in science, and we can maybe do another video on it uh, called latent heat. But what happens is when that humidity, when that, that water vapor turns back into a liquid, it releases a small amount of heat very tiny amounts but since you're over the ocean you have lots of water so you end up with little tiny bits of heat but if you have enough of these little tiny bits of heat you start to create more heat here which causes there to be more air being pulled up and that more air being pulled up has more water in it with more water in it it starts to turn uh, condense back into clouds which makes releases more heat I always think of this as like a toddler. Have you ever seen a toddler before when they want an M&M and you give them the wrong color? And then they start crying and they start crying because they can't have that color. And then when they cry so much, they get out of breath because they're out of breath. It makes them upset, so they cry more. And then they throw their head back and they hit their head against the tile, which hurts, which makes them cry more. That's kind of what a hurricane is like. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And these winds going in get stronger and stronger because the more that comes up, the bigger this low pressure system becomes and the stronger these winds are as they're getting pulled into this low pressure system. When it's hurricane season here in Texas, we generally pay close attention to what's happening off of the coast of Africa. Now, why is that? The answer is we have some global winds that are going to bring those hurricanes to us. Let's take a little closer look. The Earth has some global winds that are pretty predictable. In the US, most of our weather goes from the west to the east. There's some global winds called the westerlies because the wind is blowing from the west. A little further south, when we get down into Central America, we have the global winds that move from east to west. We call those the trade winds. And we know that from social studies, that there are these trade winds that would bring the explorers over to the Americas and then once they got their trades, they got their goods, they would bring them back to Europe on the westerlies. Same thing happens with the hurricanes. Now off the coast of Africa, the water there tends to become quite warm. And because that water is quite warm, we start to have this low pressure system start to form, which again makes these clouds. And as those clouds form, we start getting that condensation and that, that angry toddler that I talked about starts to form, that storm that feeds itself starts to grow. And because of these trade winds that's going to bring them from east to west, you can start to see this storms are going to be coming all the way across to the Americas. Now, all of that way, they're going to be traveling across warm water. So that storm is going to continue to grow and build up strength and get angrier and angrier and get more intense and more intense, which is why as it comes across the ocean, we can see it's a category one. Now it's a category two. It's a category three. It's getting more and more intense as it goes.
When we think of a hurricane, we think of this shape right here, the way it's spinning and getting pulled in like this. Now we've talked about how hurricanes go from highs to low, so we know that the air is going to move in to that low pressure, but why does it spin like that? The answer has to do with the rotation of the Earth through a phenomena called the Coriolis effect. To understand the Coriolis effect, let's think about a pilot sitting in an airplane in Houston, Texas. He's going to take off in this airplane and he's going to fly directly north, just looking at his compass and he's always going to fly north. And he's going to fly north for hours and hours right before he gets to Canada and then he's going to land. So my question is, where do you think he will land? Will he land in Fargo, North Dakota? Will he land in Augusta, Maine? Or will he land in Seattle, Washington? All right, let's take a look and see. So we'll start by flying the airplane from Houston north, but we'll pretend that the Earth is not spinning. So as soon as I take off and I start flying north, I do exactly what you would think. I land in Fargo, North Dakota, flying directly north. But now the Earth is going to rotate. And as the airplane is in the air, the Earth is rotating underneath it. So when the airplane lands, it's going to land in Seattle, Washington. This means that the airplane pilot doesn't fly to where the city is. He flies to where the city is going to be because the Earth is rotating. And so if we look at it on a map, it would look like the airplane pilot was flying like that. And if we extend this out, it's going to look just like the way a hurricane spins. That's called the Coriolis effect. Hurricanes are measured in categories depending on how strong their winds are. So you can see category 1 from 74 to 95 would not cause severe damage. But over 157 miles an hour, Category 5, those can be absolutely destructive. In summary, hurricanes form over warm, moist ocean waters. The longer a hurricane sits over that water, the stronger it becomes. Hurricanes are formed when warm air rises, creating low pressure. We have this low pressure right here, and it's going to pull that air in. That air being pulled in is those intense winds that we measure in those category ratings. Hurricanes frequently form in the warm waters off the coast of Africa or sometimes in the Gulf of Mexico and are brought to North America by global winds called the trade winds. The earth rotation causes hurricanes in the northern hemisphere anyway to spin in a counterclockwise direction.